I'm joined by two of the most powerful women in football, Fatma Samora and Sarai Berriman. I want to start off on a light note. You both came into your positions in 2016 at the same time, and you've worked closely together now on the FIFA Women's World Cup. What do you um, admire most about each other? For me, uh, already at, it was my first interaction with the football world, so I had to rely, rely a lot on, on Sarai because uh, not many people uh, know, but Sarai was part of uh, the task force that was in charge of uh, implementing uh, the reform after the big uh, uh, scandal that uh, uh, FIFA faced back in 2015. So if today uh, we have uh, more women uh, sitting on, on the board, in the boardrooms, and also taking it uh, to, the, to the field, we owe it a little bit to her. But for me, the fact that I'm in this post being led by a woman is absolutely incredible. You know, she's the first woman to lead this organisation and it's more than 100 year history. Um, she's also a woman of colour. She's a Muslim. I mean, these are things where before she even opens her mouth, it's incredible that she sits there. And then, of course, I get to work with her very closely. Um, and I have to be honest, when I first came to FIFA, I was very intimidated by her. I mean, she really, yeah, she was. Um, but over the years, the closer that we've been able to work together, we've actually formed a, a very nice friendship as well. Uh, she supports me, obviously, in everything that I do for the women's game. Um, it's an honour to be able to travel the world with her, to visit our member associations, and to really get onto the ground and have a concrete impact. I work with the UN, as you all know, for 21 years, and uh, I realized really in a matter of uh, seven years how important football was. Uh, when you are a, 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 a UN official, sometimes you take uh, one week before meeting with the head of state, for example, because, I mean, uh, uh, they always, always consider you can wait. When you say I'm, uh, I'm the FIFA Secretary General or the, or the FIFA President, coming to a country, I mean, all the doors are open yeah, to you. And uh, to me, I think I made uh, the right move in moving um, uh, to, to football after having also served humanity. And uh, I hope that we will continue to have the opportunity uh, with the FIFA President, but also with my colleague uh, from uh, women football and uh, in FIFA in general, to really uh, change the narrative starting uh, from 2023 when it comes to women football. You were the first non-European and the first female to, to be given the position of, of Secretary General. What are the challenges that you've had to overcome because it is a sporting organisation that is dominated by males traditionally? Well, I think the first challenges was to really establish uh, the reputation of FIFA. And that was also one of uh, uh, the strongest commitment I, I made to Jani. And I say, if after six months in this position, I cannot change the narrative and uh, bringing more partners uh, to FIFA and also those who have departed back, it means that I have failed in my mission. And I think today, uh, when, when we joined, definitely uh, FIFA was considered as a toxic, uh, <laughs> as a toxic organization. <laughs> That's the word of Jani, not mine. <laughs> and uh, and today, I think everybody want to be associated to to FIFA. We we will have, I'm sure, as we go, many more demand from everybody because people want really to close any kind of gap. But we are ready because we have a president who believes in the value of football. To, to transcend uh, many obstacles in the world, including uh, uh, gender, gender disparity. And uh, this is, I think, our, our next fight to, to get uh, also the world ready to accept that uh, women football is, is growing and is something that is going to stay for quite some time. And what changes have you seen in the time that you've been with FIFA since 2016? And how have you helped that development as well when it comes to women's football? Well, I think the first changes were in terms of representation and in terms also of recognizing uh, the, the value of women football. Um, the first, I think, uh, major decision that uh, uh, this uh, task force in change of reform took was to establish a fully dedicated division for women football headed by, by of course, uh, uh, Sarai. Uh, the second thing we, we did uh, as part of this um, uh, uh, reform package was also to have uh, uh, more women being represented at the level of uh, uh, the confederation. So today we have six women uh, sitting on our, on our council, 
uh, with me as, a, as a, 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 the head of the secretariat for this um, very important decision-making body. What we did in terms of women football also was to, to bring it the decision to pick up uh, the, um, the host country starting in 2027 mm -hmm. uh, to, the, to the Congress, like, like the Men's World Cup. The changes was also reflected in terms of really recognizing the value of, uh, of the Women's uh, <coughs> World Cup by uh, unbundling the, the right uh, with, uh, with the Men's World Cup. For years, for, for, for 100 years, uh, when you, you submit a, a, a bid for, for, the, for the World Cup, for the Men's World Cup, you get uh, almost freely the Women's World Cup. Today it's not the case. We have a dedicated <coughs> commercial strategy and uh, that recognize also the importance of, uh, of the product. And uh, we, we, we think that at uh, the end, if really the broadcasters come with more reasonable approach, we'll be uh, uh, having the first um, uh, World Cup where we will be covering almost all our, all our uh, costs. And uh, we have also seen a, a, a much higher budget, $1.5 billion uh, uh, invested in women football. Many uh, studies have also been uh, commissioned regarding women health and uh, we are also uh, embarking in a, in a massive consultation with experts in, in genetic, in medicine regarding also these ACL injuries for the Women's World Cup and uh, we want uh, uh, really our ambition is one day to stop talking about men's and women's football and just to consider that we are all equal uh, in front of this uh, beautiful game and that uh, we don't uh, bother about really the money, but about uh, uh, how much we can do to also um, uh, change the world through uh, this beautiful game. Uh, because uh, as I said, uh, during my time um, uh, with the UN, uh, it's where really I was confronted for the first time with, uh, with the big, the importance and, uh, and the key role that football plays in Africa. I, I, I was uh, unfortunate to be um, um, uh, working in hardship duty station and in countries in crisis like Sierra Leone and Liberia. And um, the only time where really those young warriors were accepting to lay down the arms and, and really have a peaceful life was when it was raining and when uh, football games were being played. And uh, again, back in 1994, uh, during this uh, Tutsi genocide, uh, the very first time, well, uh, well, you from the both community accepted to 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 um, talk about uh, peace and social cohesion was uh, when uh, UNDP came up uh, with a project of building a, a pitch uh, that will be symbolizing uh, unity and, and and peace and social cohesion. Some of the things that have been highlights for me are around the national teams. When we first came on board in 2016, there were, I think, 136 of those 211 that had active women's national teams. Uh, we now have more than 180. Of course, we want to see all 211 and we will get there. Um, but for me, that's a big indicator because we know that when a national team is active, the entire football pyramid underneath is active as well. You know, the leagues, uh, the talent ID, the youth competitions and the teams. So that for me is a, a really big indicator. I think the other thing is strategies. Um, one of the first things we did uh, as a team was to put in place a global strategy to grow women's football. It was the first time it had been done by FIFA. Um, it's a, a very broad strategy that covers all aspects of our game. And since we launched that in 2018, almost all of the FIFA member associations have followed suit and launched their own dedicated strategies uh, for women's football. And that's really important. When we go to visit countries uh, around the world, you know, that's the piece of paper or the document that we take with us that tells us very clearly what is this country trying to achieve? What can we do as FIFA to support them? Uh, the other thing I think um, at the elite end of the game um, is the growth trajectory has been incredible and we see little snippets of that all the time. You know, in some of the best leagues in the world, I'm thinking of Spain, Last year we had you know, more than 90,000 fans in a local derby there. Uh, we see it in the Women's Euro, huge numbers in the final there where England obviously took home the trophy. So we see the, 
the fans and the interest just growing exponentially all the time. And that's the awesome thing about a Women's World Cup. You know, this year it's going to be in Australia and New Zealand, and it gives us a great measuring stick every four years to actually see how far have we come. But I think also on the competition side, there are also uh, some major milestones yes. that we have now. Uh, uh, more competition coming, but also at a professional level, who is this, um, the first edition of uh, the uh, FIFA Clubs uh, yes. World Cup that will be uh, maybe starting very soon. Yes, exactly, yeah. So the Women's Club World Cup uh, is something that's been talked about for a long time, and we definitely want to see this launched. Uh, obviously, it will provide a huge incentive uh, for the leagues and clubs uh, around the world. And we're working very closely at the moment with our stakeholders on how the format will be, what the access list will be, where, of course, that first edition will be played. Um, so very, very exciting. Um, I think competitions-wise, we also have a futsal uh, yes. Women's World Cup as well. Um, and our youth tournaments will be played on a more regular basis. So under 17, which is the first uh, level for international tournament, we're going to have that being played on an annual basis now, which means we'll have a constant pool of talent yes. coming through to the senior levels, which is amazing. I think also the expansion of uh, this World Cup um, from 24 back in France to now is also, also uh, a very nice story to tell. Yeah because uh, it took uh, less time to, yes. to, to, to expand the team than yeah. the Men's World Cup will be only expanded in 2026. So meaning also when you're talking about the values of, of women football, people are more, is, uh, recognize it very easily and are more ready to embark on, uh, on any major reform. Yeah. Lastly, Fatma, you've spent some time here in Australia and New Zealand now. Is there any slang, any words that you've learned <laughs> while being here? <laughs> no, uh, I, I was not into, into the slang, but what I'm fascinated <laughs> about is really the, uh, um, uh, the Aboriginal culture here. I think uh, um, I, I used to say to my friend, if I, I was not in the UN, I would be definitely a researcher on, uh, on um, um, sociology and also on really uh, knowing more about the people who are part of this beautiful world. So um, I would like really to say the opportunity of being here to discover uh, more about uh, uh, the First Nations culture, I'm very curious about and I've always asked to different people, where do they come from? I want to know whether they have some African background and yeah. more and more I'm convinced about it because yeah. when, I, when I visit uh, the museum and there are many commonalities in the way, in the cult uh, for, the, for, the, for the dead people but also for the living people, the importance that uh, they grant to, to ancestors and to elders and uh, definitely uh, for me uh, it will be um, a, a, a good eye-opener for the rest of the world also to see uh, that uh, we are uh, we are we all love football we are yet different but we are all the same and uh, the slang i hope that he will be teaching me a few of them i will before. teach you yeah i will teach you a few there's there's one i came across yesterday actually i was in a conversation and a good song came on and someone said to me, um, this is a banger, it really slaps. <laughs> so that means like this is a really good song and it's really awesome. So <laughs> That's a good way of putting it, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time and we hope to speak to you sometime soon again. Having this talk with you and really, we can't wait uh, to uh, see uh, the whole world eyes being yes. on your We're beautiful so country, yes. It. And to be sitting here talking about the World Cup in these very iconic uh, places, the Opera House, and overlooking the harbour is something that uh, I will remember for the rest of my life. Did you enjoy that? There's so much more, so why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.